Hi folks, welcome back to Physics with Captain Rod. The purpose of this video is to introduce you to the concept of the parallel axis theorem. So what we're looking at here, imagine this long slender bar here uh, of mass m length l. I put a couple of coordinate systems here that we can talk about here. Here's one right at the center of the bar, x, y. Here's another one down here, um, x prime, y prime. Let's say that this is a distance I'll just call it a D, I guess, from the center of uh, the bar. Now, we know by direct integration that the moment of inertia of a bar with an axis right through its center is 1 12th ml squared. Now, the million dollar question is, <clears throat> can we use this moment of inertia to calculate the moment of inertia about this axis, right? The moment of inertia of this bar about this axis. And the answer is yes. All right, the parallel axis theorem basically says this. If we know the moment of inertia of any sort of object about its center of mass, and we want to calculate the moment of inertia of that object about some axis somewhere, then that moment of inertia is equal to the moment of inertia about the center of mass plus md squared, where d is the distance from the center of mass to the axis of rotation. So basically what that means is, you know, imagine I've got some sort of object here, and I know the moment of inertia about this axis which goes through its center, and that's what this would be. Then I move the axis out to here, the moment of inertia of this new object about the new axis is equal to the moment of inertia about its center of mass, plus m times d squared. All right, so we're going to apply that to the bar here. <clears throat> so the moment of inertia of this bar about this axis is going to equal the moment of inertia of the bar about its centroidal axis, which is 1 12th ml squared, plus we just tack on a term, a mass times distance squared, for the fact that the uh, new axis is a distance d away. And there's an expression for the new moment of inertia. If I, I don't know, pick the spot maybe uh, just to do one more here, put it in another green coordinate system. Let's put it right here, the coordinate system right here. All right. So let's call this coordinate system, how about uh, x double prime, y double prime, why not? All right. So now, if I want the moment of inertia of this mass about the um, new coordinate system, our new moment of inertia is going to be, again, the moment of inertia of this mass about its own centroidal axis, or about its center of mass, which is 1 12th ml squared plus... Now we just tack on an m times this distance squared. So m times, now we want an expression for this distance, that's not d. If we take a look at a triangle here, look at this triangle right here. This distance is l over two. This distance is d. Therefore, this distance is d squared plus l over two squared. So now we just tack on a d squared plus L over 2 squared. And there we have it. Here's our moment of inertia about the centroid plus mass times distance squared for the fact that the, the coordinate system or the axis rotation has moved from here to here. Now these moment of inertias that I've calculated in every example here has, have been the moment of inertia about the z axis. So in this example here we're, we're talking about rotation about the z-axis like clock uh, counterclockwise or clockwise for rotation counterclockwise or clockwise so i hope this uh, video helps demonstrate how to apply the parallel axis theorem it's kind of a short sweet deal uh, very short theorem have a nice day